I'm Indy Nidell, and this is Out of the Ether, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and read your most interesting, enlightening, or even controversial comments. Now, I have only one comment to read today, and it's quite a long one, so you gotta bear with me, but it's a good one. Jack Sharp writes about the German Afghanistan expedition. Hi Indy Flow and Company, my name is Jack Sharp and I'm a huge fan of your show. I don't know if this will be any use to you, well obviously it is, but I've been doing some reading on World War I and came across a German expedition to Afghanistan in 1915. Since I love the stories you guys tell of other adventures like the Dunster Force, I thought this would be something you'd like to know about. I may have missed some things about it, but I'm sure I'll be corrected in the comments. He knows how YouTube works. Great. Okay, here we go. With the Western Front locked down in the trenches, the main forces fighting the war began looking for other ways to end it. The British and French attempted an invasion at Gallipoli, but many do not know of the Germans' attempts in the Middle East. This is the story of the German-Afghanistan meeting, also known as the niedermeyer hentig expedition. In the early days of the war, the Emir of Afghanistan, Habibullah Khan, declared Afghanistan neutral for the war, right? He feared that the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed V and his declaration of jihad against the Allies would have a destabilizing effect on his rule. He was given funding from the British, who also controlled Afghani foreign affairs. The Germans attempted to send an expedition to Afghanistan in 1914, but that attempt failed. In fact, it didn't even reach Afghanistan. This expedition is notable, however, as it led to the British capture of the German codebook, allowing the British to decipher the German communications. Okay, the Germans, not giving up their hopes, sent a second expedition in 1915. This one was led nominally by an exiled Indian, Mahendra Pratap. Pratap wanted to liberate India from the British, so he came to the Germans, who were more than happy to try and create chaos for the British. Right? Uh, the expedition also had two German officers alongside Pratap, Oscar Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer always reminds me of the movie Animal House. Hey, Niedermeyer. Anyhow, Oscar Niedermeyer, German general, super spy, and known as the German Lawrence of Arabia by some historians and scholars. And Werner Otto von Hentig, a German officer and adventurer. The main tasks for the second expedition were to undermine the British by fomenting dissent in the empire, most notably in India, encourage Afghanistan to join the Central Powers, secure Persia as a link between Germany and Afghanistan. The group, Sanz Niedermeyer, who was already in the region, gathered in Berlin in spring 1915. They were given a letter from the Kaiser to the Emir Khan and gold and jewelry and other gifts to bring. The group set out for Kabul, traveling through Vienna, Budapest, Bucharest, Sofia, and finally arriving in Constantinople April 17th. In Constantinople, they met both Enver Pasha and Sultan Mehmed V. They headed to Baghdad via the unfinished Baghdad Railway, crossing the Taurus Mountains and navigating the Euphrates River. From Baghdad, they headed to the Persian border and then to Tehran. In Persia, they had to avoid British and Russian soldiers. They then made for Tebez. The conditions in Persia were horrendous for the men who had to endure savage heat and dehydration. British and Russian patrols hunting them, dust storms and fighting off snakes and scorpions. They arrived at Tebez, which Hentig took to calling the hottest town on earth, on July 23rd, exhausted and with some members of the expedition sick with malaria. On the trip to Herat from Tebez, they avoided gangs of highwaymen, the British Army Group, the South Persia Rifles led by Sir Percy Sykes, the East Persia Cordon, and a band of Russian Cossacks. The group was now down to 37 men and 79 animals. That's down from 140 men and 236 animals. Many of those had died from the fighting, from starvation, from dehydration, disease, or had simply deserted. Niedermeyer writes of the joy he had when entering Afghanistan, saying, Toward five in the morning, on August 21st, we reached the abandoned and dilapidated settlement of Mogul Betche. At midnight on the 22nd, we set off. At six in the morning, we passed by some fields. Their fresh green color was an unfamiliar view for us. We needed all our strength to prevent the animals from rushing into the fields in which some Afghans were working, clothed in white linen. 
Two hours later, we stumbled into the first Afghan village, Pere, a miserable, sad pile. We were received and accommodated by the astonished natives with kindness, but with a certain shy reservation. One could not hold this against these people who, in their lives, had not seen any European. At Herat, the group was welcomed by the governor, who gave them a grand welcome. Their horses were also given new saddles to help with the journey across Afghanistan. The group had a two-week rest period at Herat. They could travel, under some supervision, pretty much anywhere in the city. They reached Kabul on October 2, 1915, six months after Pratap and Hentig left Berlin. When they arrived in Kabul, the group had to wait until the 26th to meet with the Emir. But before the meeting, he received a letter from King George V of Britain thanking him for his friendship and loyalty. So the, the Emir, the Khan, he was in no hurry to meet with the group, only doing so after Niedermeyer and Hentig threatened to go on a hunger strike. The group gave him the Kaiser's letter, but the Khan was doubtful of its authenticity. They explained that an independent Afghanistan would help the Turks avoid war between the different branches of Islam after the Sultan's declaration of jihad against the Allies. He was invited to join the Indian people in a war against the British, with Pratap stating the Khan could gain vast swaths of land all over Central Asia if he joined them. The Germans also told him they would provide troops, weapons, and a sum of 10 million pounds worth of gold bullion if he signed a deal with them. The Emir, while recognizing Afghanistan's difficult position between both Britain and, and Russia, argued that he needed more than words. He had been given supplies and money from the British for both himself and his armies. If he did what the German expedition wanted, he'd be cutting off his own financial source. He wanted to know when they would be giving him their money and the weapons needed to get his army prepared for any possible conflict with Britain or Russia. The expedition had no immediate answers to any of these questions, just vague promises of an alliance with Persia which would help. The Khan was not impressed. The meeting was cordial, though. Uh, the Khan met with more delegates from Germany and some from India, taking into consideration their points but not committing himself fully until he knew 100% what the plans were. One of these meetings was between Niedermeyer and the Khan, who advised the Khan on how to modernize his army and use artillery. The expedition also met with the Prime Minister of Afghanistan, Nasrullah Khan, who was more receptive to the group's offers and was a supporter of the expedition, being pro-German. The Emir continued hosting the expedition for the rest of 1915. In December, he told Hentig that he wanted to draft a friendship agreement between Afghanistan and Germany. The process of drawing up this agreement took many weeks, though, finally being sent to the German embassy in Tehran on January 24, 1916. Some of the clauses in the agreement included recognizing Afghanistan's independence, declaration of friendship with Germany, establishing diplomatic relations with Germany, guarantee German assistance if Britain and Russia attacked, modernizing the Emir's army with 100,000 rifles and 300 artillery pieces, maintaining a supply line through Persia, 1 million pounds to be paid to the Emir. The next day, after the agreement was sent, though, he held a meeting with a British agent, whom he told that the neutrality of Afghanistan would continue. This he announced January 29th. This decision could have led to the Ottomans trying to invade Afghanistan, but the Afghans were helped in February when the Russians took Erzurum, cutting the Ottomans off from their routes into Persia. Hentig and Niedermeyer, realizing their expedition had failed, decided to leave Afghanistan. They were escorted out of Afghanistan by the Emir's forces, avoided capture by the British and the Russians, eventually arriving back in Germany. The expedition may have ended in failure, but it had a long-term impact on Afghanistan and Habibullah Khan. The expedition gave rise to a huge rise of nationalism from the local people, who grew more and more angry with the Emir. This anger reached its crescendo in 1919 when Habibullah Khan was assassinated. This led to the Third Anglo-Afghan War and the eventual signing of the Anglo-Afghan Treaty, where Britain finally recognized the independence of Afghanistan. Oskar von Niedermeyer, after returning to Germany, continued with assignments throughout the Arab world until 1918, when he was recalled to the Western Front, where he served in the final battles of the war. 
After the armistice, he joined the Freikorps, continued serving in the German army into World War II, and eventually died in 1948 while in the custody of the Soviets. Von Hentig, after the expedition, went to work in the German embassy in Istanbul until the armistice, when he was involved in the re repatriation of German POWs in Serbia. He served in the German government in various positions, was an opponent of the Nazi party, and served as German ambassador to Indonesia after World War II. He died August 8, 1984, in Norway. I hope you enjoyed this little-known tale from the war. I enjoy these sorts of tales, like the Dunster Force or the adventures of the Emden or the Merve. Thank you for all the hard work you and the guys put into this channel. I love it so much, and I'm eagerly awaiting the final chapter of the war. This is a great one. I am a supporter of you guys on Patreon and have to thank you guys for showing me how interesting World War I is. Jack Sharp. Well, thanks, Jack. That was a great, that was a great story. Now, we have talked at different times about intrigues in Persia and, of course, the Dunster Force and all the stuff in Palestine. It's interesting to go even further over to the failed Afghani mission. I'm sure that everybody found that quite interesting. Um, the post-war stuff, the, uh, especially with the third uh, Anglo-Afghani uh, war, is really, really interesting. And I really recommend you looking it up for yourself because it's something we can't cover in this channel. But it certainly played a huge part in, in the future of that region. Um, so, Jack, thanks again for today, and if you would like to see our episode about the Dunster Force, the first one, you can click right here for that, and it will lead you to the second one. I will see you next time.